Good day everyone. In this video, we will talk about Imogen King and her theory of goal attainment. A short biography of Dr. Imogen M. King. Before going to start her biography, I would like to share something about her. Dr. Imogen King dreamed of being a teacher. However, to escape her life in small town, she accepted her uncle's offer to study nursing, where she never thought would lead her to become one of the pioneers of the most sought nurse theorist. Dr. Imogen King was born in West Point, Lua on January 30, 1923. She is also the youngest of the three children. Now let us start with the educational background. To begin with, in 1945, she received a nursing diploma from St. John's Hospital of Nursing, St. Louis, Missouri. In 1948, B.S. Nursing in Education with Minors in Philosophy and Chemistry from St. John's Hospital of Nursing, St. Louis, Missouri. In 1957, Master of Science in Nursing from St. John's University. In 1961, Doctorate in Education from Teachers College, Columbia University. And lastly, in 1980, Honorary PhD from Southern Illinois University, Postdoctoral Study in Research Design, Statistics, and in Computer. Next are the work experiences of Dr. Imogen King. First is that she is an administrator director of the Ohio State University School of Nursing in the year 1968 to 1972. Next is that she is an educator at St. John's Hospital School of Nursing, Loyola University and University of South Florida in the year 1961 to 1980. And um, during this year, she was involved in efforts to change the curriculum from a medical model to a nursing model. Next is that she is a practitioner as adult medical surgical nurse. Next is that she is an assistant chief at the Research Grants Branch Division of Nursing Department of Health and Welfare, Washington, D.C., 1966 to 1968. And lastly, she was honored as Professor Emeritus at the University of South Florida in the year 1990. So lastly, what we are going to talk about are the achievements of Dr. Imogen King. First on the list is that she is a founder of King International Nursing Group in the year 1998. She is also a recipient of Jesse M. Scott Award, ANA Convention in 1996. And this award is presented to a registered nurse whose accomplishments in practice, education, or research demonstrate the interdependence of those fields and their significance in improving nursing and healthcare. She was also inducted in the American Nurses Association Hall of Fame and in the Florida Nurses Association Hall of Fame. In 2005, she was given a title Living Legend by the American Academy of Nursing. Influences of the Theorist So I have in here three main points and first is that the problems in the lack of a professional nursing language, a theoretical nursing phenomena, and limited concept development. Second, the Holland and the Holland and McDowell conceptual framework influence Imogen King's rationale for developing a schematic representation of nursing phenomena. The levels of interaction in those works influence her ideas relative to organizing a conceptual frame of reference for nursing. Lastly, the philosophical position that guides the study of organized complexity as a whole system was rooted in general system theory which originated by von Bertalanffy. Now that we know Imogen King and what influenced her or motivates her to develop not only a conceptual system for nursing but most importantly a theory, let us now move forward and talk about the theory and where it originates from. So Imogen King's theory of goal attainment was first published in 1971. It is a middle-range theory 
based on her conceptual system in the 1960s. As we have learned from Dr. Freslin Limsako on our first topic, that a middle range theory are narrower in scope than grand theories. A middle range theory may also have their foundations in a particular paradigmatic perspective or may be derived from grand theories or conceptual system or model, which is so true about the theory of goal attainments case because it is based and developed also from Imogen King's conceptual system. So King's conceptual system, which also has called the open systems model, the interacting systems framework, and the general systems framework, focuses on the continuing ability of individuals to meet their basic needs so that they may function in their socially defined roles as well as on individuals interaction within three open dynamic interacting systems now what are these three open dynamic interacting systems the three open dynamic interacting systems are the personal system the interpersonal system and the social system now at the center of the illustration we can spot there the personal system now that system consists solely of individuals individuals who are regarded as rational sentient and social beings examples could be the nurse the client or the patient the healthcare providers or professionals and the family members of the patient. We can also see their different concepts that are important for us to understand because these are the fundamentals in understanding human beings or individuals like perception, self, growth and development, body image, time, personal space and learning. Now, among all these concepts, the most important is perception because it influences behavior. King even summarized the connections among these concepts as an individual's perception of self, of body image, of time, of space, influences the way he or she responds to objects and events in his or her life. Now, as individuals grow and develop through the lifespan, experiences with these changes in structure and function of their bodies over time influences their perception of self. The next interacting system is the interpersonal system, which are formed when human beings interact with each other. Now, King refers to two individuals interacting as dyads, three as triads, and four or more individuals as small group or large group. Now, as the number of interacting individuals increases, so does the complexity of the interactions. Now, um, this system shows how the nurse interrelates with a co-worker or a patient, particularly in a nurse-patient relationship, and communication between uh, the nurse and the client can be verbal or non-verbal. Now, to understand interpersonal system, we have to understand also the concepts associated with this, um, which are the stress, role, interaction, communication, and transaction. The final system is the social system. Now, this is a more comprehensive interacting system. These are groups of people within the community or society that share a common goals, values, and interests. It provides a framework for social interaction and relationships and establishes rules of behavior and courses of action. Now, if the interpersonal system shows how the nurse interrelates with a co-worker or a patient, and social system shows how the nurse interacts with a co-worker, superiors, subordinates, and client in general. Now, concepts that are important for us to understand the social systems are organization, authority, power, control, decision-making, and status. Now that we know um, the three open dynamic interacting systems and the concepts important in understanding each system, let us now see which of these concepts Imogen King selected for the development of her theory. Out of 
those 18 concepts from her conceptual system, King selected 10 and these are perception, self, growth and development, time, personal space, interaction, role, communication, transaction, and stress. Perception is a process of organizing, interpreting, and transforming information from sense data and memory that gives meaning to one's experience, represents one's image of reality, and influences one's behavior. Perception is universal, yet highly subjective and unique to each person. Self is a composite of thoughts and feelings which constitute a person's awareness of his individual existence, his conception of who and what he is. A person's self is the sum total of all he can call his. The self includes, among other things, a system of ideas, attitudes, values, and commitments. Growth and development can be defined as the processes in people's lives through which they move from a potential for the achievement to the actualization of self. Time is defined as a duration between one event and another as uniquely experienced by each human being. It is the relation of one event to another event. Personal space. Space exists in all directions. It is the same everywhere and is defined by the physical area known as territory and by the behaviors of those occupying it. Interactions are defined as the observable behaviors of two or more individuals in mutual presence. So interaction is a sequence of verbal and nonverbal behaviors that are goal-oriented. Next is role. Now, role is a set of behaviors expected of persons occupying a position in a social system. The characteristics of the role include reciprocity in that a person may be a giver at one time and a taker at another time, with a relationship between two or more individuals who are functioning in two or more roles. King defines communication as a process whereby information is given from one person to another either directly in a face-to-face -face meeting or indirectly through telephone, television, or the written word. King defines transaction as a process of interaction in which human beings communicate with the environment to achieve goals that are valued. And transactions are goal-directed human behaviors. And last, we have stress. Stress is a dynamic state whereby a human being interacts with the environment to maintain balance for growth, development, and performance, which involves an exchange of energy and information between the person and the environment for regulation and control of stressors. Now that we know the concepts or the building blocks of the theory of goal attainment, let us also discuss how Imogen King defined the nursing meta paradigms, which are the health, environment, person, and nursing. So, health is a dynamic state in the life cycle in which implies continuous adjustment to stress in the internal and external environment through the optimum use of one's resources to achieve the maximum potential for daily living. Environment is the background for human interaction. It is both external to and internal to the individual. The internal environment transforms energy to enable person to adjust to continuous external environmental changes, while the external environment involves formal and informal organizations, and nurse is a part of the patient's environment. We also have the person or the human beings. So individuals are social beings who are unique and holistic of intrinsic work and capable of rational thinking and decision making in most situations. And although individuals are different or unique from each other, still they exhibit common characteristics such as ability to perceive, to think, to feel, to choose between alternative courses of action, to set goals, 
to select the means to achieve goals and to make decisions. King's theory of goal attainment also identified three basic health needs of man or person. First is the information on health that can be accessed and utilized when needed. Second is care that aims to prevent illness. And last is care in times of illness or helplessness. And last we have the nursing. Nursing is a process of action, reaction, and interaction whereby nurse and client share information about their perceptions in the nursing situation. The nurse and client share specific goals, problems, and concerns and explore means to achieve goals. Let us now proceed to the theory of goal attainment. Now, the theory of goal attainment states that Nursing is a process of action, reaction, and interaction whereby nurse and client share information about their perception in the nursing situation and a process of human interactions between nurse and client whereby each perceives the other and the situation and through communication, they set goals, explore means, and agree on means to achieve these goals. To help us better understand Imogen King's theory of goal attainment, here is an illustration. Now, this illustration represents a process of human interaction that leads to the transaction particularly between the nurse and the patient or the client. Now, the theory of goal attainment deals with a nurse-patient dyad. So, it is a relationship to which each person brings personal perception of self, of role, and personal levels of growth and development. Now, the nurse and the client communicate first in interaction and then in transaction to attain mutually set goals. The relationship takes place in space identified by their behaviors and occur in forward moving time. The propositions made in Imogen King's theory of goal attainment are if perceptual interaction accuracy is present in nurse-patient interactions, transaction will occur. If the nurse and patient make transaction, the goal or goals will be achieved. If the goal or goals are achieved, satisfaction will occur. If the goal or goals are achieved, effective nursing care will occur. If the transaction are made in nurse-patient interactions, growth and development will be enhanced. If role expectations and role performance as perceived by the nurse and the patient are congruent, transaction will occur. If role conflict is experienced by either the nurse or the patient or both, stress in the nurse-patient interaction will occur. And if a nurse with special knowledge communicates appropriate information to the patient, mutual goal setting and goal achievement will occur. Imogen King's conceptual system and theory of goal attainment were based on an overall assumption that the focus of nursing is human beings interacting with their environment, leading to a state of health for individuals which is an ability to function in social roles. Application of Theory to Nursing Research, Education, and Practice The development of Imogen King's conceptual system and middle-range theory of goal attainment contribute a lot to the advancement of nursing knowledge. King's conceptual system and theory of goal attainment has been found to be a basis for the development of many concepts and middle-range theory for nursing. Even in the field of education, King's theory of goal attainment has been found so useful for it has served as framework for many nursing education programs, and King's theory has made many education reforms that resulted in nursing education. King's theory has been found meaningful and effective for nurse to practice at bedside, as this theory focuses on setting goals and meeting them with involvement of the patient, quality of care provided increases, which in turn leads to more patient satisfaction. So that's all for our creative presentation. We hope that you've learned a lot and thank you so much for your time watching this video.